Let's try to simplify down the concept of circumcenters. First off, take a look at this triangle of triangle QRS, which is this thing over here. To understand circumcenters, it's really important to know that when you take a side length like QS and we draw a perpendicular bisector to it, it creates two equivalent segments like QY and YS, which also creates right angles and therefore right triangles. For segment QR, we can do the same thing and draw another perpendicular bisector that creates equivalent segments of WR and WQ and creates more right triangles. And finally, doing this one more time with segment RS, if we draw another perpendicular bisector, it creates two congruent segments of RX and XS. And the point where all three of these perpendicular bisectors intersect is called point Z or the circumcenter. Shortening all the perpendicular bisectors to clean this up a bit, it'll look like this. All three of the perpendicular bisectors create right triangles as well as congruent segments. Another unique property that you want to know is that segment RZ, segment QZ, and segment SC are all congruent. Basically, the distance from the circumcenter to each of the corners or the vertices are all the same. Now let's see if we can use all this information that we know to figure out these five pieces of information. I think one of the easier things to figure out here is going to be finding the length of XS. So if we know that the length of RS is equal to 80, then the length of XS is going to be 40 because the length of RX is also equal to 40. Because we know that point X is the midpoint of segment RS, we know this is going to be true. Another easier one I think we can do next is figuring out the length of QR. Knowing that the length of QW is equal to 25, that must mean that the length of RW is also equal to 25. Adding those two together, we know the length of QR is going to be equal to 50. While figuring out those two pieces of information wasn't too bad, the next few are going to take a little bit more work. Let's take a look at segment ZS now. Looking at segment ZS, I want you to focus in on this smaller triangle of SXZ. If we rotate that triangle and draw it on the side here, we'd have vertex X over here, S over here, and Z up here. Remember, segment XZ represents the perpendicular bisector, so that's where the right angle is. We were given that XZ was equal to 9, so we can go ahead and label that over here, and we had figured out that segment XS was equal to 40. To find the length of segment ZS, we're going to use the legs of these triangles of 9 and 40 to find the length of it, which is the hypotenuse. Remember, the two legs or the two shorter sides of a right triangle always meet at 90 degrees. Writing this out, we would have 40 raised to the second power plus this 9 raised to the second power, and that's going to be equal to C raised to the second power, or C squared. Okay? Uh, if we go ahead and square that 40, 40 times 40, that's going to be 1,600 or 1,600. And then if we go ahead and square that 9, that's going to be 81. So we can go ahead and write 81 here. And then c squared, we still don't know, so we're going to just go ahead and write c squared. Okay. If we go ahead and add the 1,681, we're going to get 1,681, and that's going to be equal to that c squared again on the other side. And then if we just go ahead and take the square root from both sides, all right, just like that, we're going to find out that c is going to be equal to 41. And if c is equal to 41, that means segment zs is also equal to 41. Now, good news for us, this was actually a bit of a two-for-one deal because segment QZ, remember, is also equidistant from the circumcenter. So if QZ is going to be the same as ZS, we can also say that this is also 41. And while we didn't have to find it, segment RZ would also be 41. Finally, let's go ahead and figure out WZ. To do that, let's go ahead and focus in on the smaller triangle of triangle WRZ. Rotating it and drawing it to the side, we have vertex W down here, we have R up here, and then Z. Remember, segment WZ was the perpendicular bisector, so we know that this is going to be the right angle. We also figured earlier that segment WR was equal to 25. And of course, RZ must be 41 because it's one of those lengths from the vertex to the circumcenter, so it matches the other ones as well. What we have to do is go ahead and figure out the length of WZ. Because WZ is one of the legs of the triangle, I'm going to go ahead and call it B. You can call it A too, that's perfectly fine, just don't call it C because it's not the hypotenuse. Writing this as an equation, we can go ahead and write 25 raised to the second power plus this B raised to the second power. We don't know what that is, that's what we're looking for. And that's going to be equal to this 41 squared as well. Okay, so on the left side, 25 squared, that's going to be 625. And then we are going to still have this B squared, that is our unknown. And on the other side, let's see, what is 41 squared? 
41 squared is going to be 1,681. And if we go ahead and subtract 625 from both sides, we're going to be isolating this B. So we have B squared is equal to, and let's see, 1,681 minus the 625. That's going to equal, I think, 1,056. 1,056. And then finally, we go ahead and take the square root of both sides. I don't think 1,056 is a perfect square, so we might have to do some work on the side here. So because 1,056 isn't a perfect square, we're gonna have to try to simplify the radical a bit here. So let's go ahead and find out uh, what kind of factors we can pull out that are perfect squares. So two goes into this because it's even, that's gonna be 528. We're gonna put a two into this one, that's gonna be 264. And we can put another two into this, that's gonna be 132. Another two into this, that's gonna be 66. And another, let's put a three into it this time. Um, that's going to be what 22 oh and one more two so that's going to be 11 so uh, any pair of uh, common primes is going to make a perfect square so that's going to be helpful to us so this two and two here make four that's a perfect square so that's going to be part of something we can pull out another two and a two together make another four that's another perfect square and i think that's it so four times four is uh, 16 and then so we have 16 as part of this so we'll have 16 and then what wasn't a perfect square well this didn't have a partner this didn't have a partner and this didn't have a partner so put that all together and that's going to be root 66 so it turns out that uh, 16 times 66 is equal to that 1056 but what's nice about the uh, the root 16 is we know that's a perfect square so that's going to be 4 so it'd be four root 66. That's the square root of 1056. So we can go ahead and write that and say, okay, B is equal to four root 66. That's the exact value, okay? And we go ahead and write that, it's gonna be four root 66. And if we go ahead and throw that in a calculator, I think that's gonna be roughly, uh, let me type it in here, that's gonna be about 32.5. So if you're looking for the value, that's what it would be approximately, but exactly it would be four root 66. So there you have it. We figured out all five of those pieces of information we were looking for for this triangle. Hopefully this helped, and even if it didn't, feel free to still click that like button anyway. As always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.